Hi, right, what's happening, y'all? It's Barrico from Street Scores, and I'm coming today with the final list of Washington's targeted 2022 draft prospects. 49 confirmed names. Definitely use these for your mock drafts. The draft is just a few days away, starting Thursday night. Of course, I will be live streaming rounds one through five, so that means Thursday for round one, Friday night for rounds two and three, and at the very least, Saturday rounds four and five. We'll see how that goes because, I mean, hopefully we acquire a fifth round pick for me to even stick around. We'll see how that goes. Maybe I stream all the way through the six. We'll just play it by ear. But for sure, rounds one through four. And I will be doing film sessions and reviews for every pick and an overall draft grade and review for our entire draft, including the drafted free agents that we bring in and everything. So stay tuned for all of the content coming up. Speaking of content coming with this video today because I'm gonna come out with my mock draft tomorrow based on these targeted prospects. Like I've said before, all of my previous mock drafts so far throughout the off season have been more so experimental. Like let's see a trade back scenario. Let's see if after this happens, what would happen? And most of the time I pick players that I really want us to get and try to put y'all on to some players that y'all may not know, may not have heard of, that are very talented. Like my most recent mock draft was based on who's the most athletic players in the draft that we could potentially get while keeping it fairly realistic. But this mock draft that I'm coming out with tomorrow is based purely on what I think will happen, what's the most realistic. So it's basically gonna be my attempt to get as many right as possible and I will include some of drafted free agent potential players as well because i mean if they can't get them through the draft with their available picks if they're still there after the draft they'll probably bring them in and sign them as undrafted free agents even though last year was kind of weird because the only one we signed was jared patterson typically guys sign somewhere between like five to eight maybe even ten guys so it was kind of weird that we only signed one guy last year maybe we'll go back to the norm of signing maybe like a handful of guys maybe like five plus but we'll see but yeah today is the final list of targeted prospects tomorrow will be the mock draft i wanted to live stream today but i ended up super busy and i'll be busy like immediately afterwards i'm just stopping to do this video then i'm going right back to being busy so the live stream will be tomorrow we'll probably do some live mock drafts i open up the phones for y'all to call in and voice y'all opinions on who we should draft and who we will draft just overall just a chill stream probably running for like two hours just discussing everything going on with this upcoming draft everything Washington commander we can discuss what you think will happen before our pick and who will be available who's more than likely going to be there for us to even try to get at 11 is there a possibility that we may trade up trade back so we're just going to talk about everything during the live stream I also have to finish up some more film sessions since I haven't been able to get them done as daily like I hoped I'm about to start cramming them in and probably doing two or three a day leading up to Thursday because I got to get a lot more done I still want to do some of my Georgia guys as well next up will be Zion McCullum, the cornerback rich requested that so that's definitely going to be the next one for the channel members and then also probably come out with this on wednesday it will be the final draft strategy video where i take quotes interviews trustworthy sources reports everything that i could find centered around what we may do in the draft so this is by position group this is by round what we should expect from the washington commanders as far as players they're targeting again specific position groups like what round we may try to take offensive line which round we may try to take receiver all of that type of stuff so just all of the trustworthy sources reports and any quotes directly from rivera mayhew i'm gonna compile it all and organize it and put it in the one video for the final draft strategy video so that we could be prepared Thursday and have no surprises and so let's go ahead and dive into this video with this long intro but before we do make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one again if you're not a channel member go become one raw and edited film sessions I'm gonna be spamming them these next few days probably do like two or three a day maybe even more than that because again I'm, there's so many guys I still gotta get to some guys that I even just have to watch for myself so I'm definitely going to record it and get it out there to channel members only. So if you haven't become one, go become one. And for everybody that already is, man, I hope y'all are enjoying the videos. And without further ado, let's get it. All right, so not gonna stay on this too long because y'all already know how this goes if you've kept up with every video when I've updated y'all on the Washington's 2022 prospect targets. 
but as of right now i had to update this you already know rounds one through seven and undrafted free agent their ranges so you'll see that color coordinated when we go to the actual list of prospects and we'll probably dive into like maybe the first maybe the second round guys when we go to the other page but the link to this file is in the description so if you want access to this if you want to use it for mock drafts or whatever have it up next to you while you're watching the draft whatever you want to use it for is free just click the link in the description it will be there all you got to do is just click that link and you can look at this page and the other page you'll see but just to talk about it real quick the suggested biggest needs i mean of course this doesn't necessarily mean these are our biggest needs but out of the 49 players seven of them are running back seven of them are edge rushers six of them are wide receivers six are quarterback then you have four linebackers four safeties four corners three offensive tackles three interior offensive linemen three tight ends and two interior defensive linemen and then i mean if you want to cross reference the highest big board spot for each position safety is the highest number one Kyle Hamilton of course cornerback number six Derek Stingley then edge number 11 Trevon Walker wide receiver 18 interior offensive lineman 22 quarterback 27 running back 31 interior defensive lineman 37 linebacker 50 offensive tackle 77 and tight end 144 so just to kind of get a general idea of how strong we feel about certain positions because even though we've interviewed and looked into or are interested in seven running backs the highest on the draft network's big board is 31st overall so it's not very likely that we'll take one with the 11th pick even though it is one of the positions we've looked into the most linebacker we have looked at four of them but the highest one on the draft network that we've looked into is ranked 50th and again like i've said every video this is the draft network's big board consensus that i'm using for these rankings I mean, no ranking is going to be completely accurate. I go with theirs because it's just so many people involved. It's like dozens of people that contribute and they just do one big, big board consensus based on that. No big board is going to be accurate, but I feel like this is the safest one to go with. Granted, a lot of people feel like the best running back is not ranked 31st. He's top 15, you know, so it, it gets weird. It gets really interesting when you dive into it and really look at big board rankings and stuff like that. I feel like this is the most consistent and the most trustworthy one to safest one so this is the one we're gonna go with and so yeah i mean again just looking at safety we've interviewed four and that's less than wide receiver quarterback edge and running back but it's the best player in the draft according to the draft network and kyle hamilton which makes it very likely that even though this is somewhere in the middle of suggested biggest needs because this is how many we've interviewed with him being the best player sounds like we're quite likely to take him at the 11 spot but at the same time the highest interior offensive lineman that we're supposedly targeting is 22nd on the big board which is pretty high but we've only looked into three of them so do we really feel like that it's that big of a need who knows so i just wanted to put everything in this perspective so you can look at the big board in the list of our targeted prospects in a different way but now let's go ahead and get to that list all right so looking at the first round you have kyle hamilton the safety from notre dame Derek stingley Travon Walker, my boy from Georgia. You have Daxton Hill from Michigan, Chris Olave from Ohio State, Drake London from USC, Zion Johnson, interior offensive lineman from Boston College, Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver from Ohio State. And I mean, again, I don't even necessarily agree with these because I like Garrett Wilson more than I like Chris Olave. And then you have Malik Willis, quarterback at Liberty. Of course, I really still want Malik Willis. I just highly doubt it happens, even though we've met with him twice. But I mean, we didn't even bring him in for a top 30 visit. So even if he's there at 11, I I doubt we take him i doubt we take kenny pickett as well and we've talked to him in three different instances and even though chris olave's we've met with him three times and ron rivera beeline to him at the pro day brought him in for a top 30 visit along with garrett wilson brought in for a top 30 visit but i'm starting to think that receiver is really a smoke screen i don't know that i may be wrong maybe we will use number 11 on receiver and i'm gonna talk about this deeply in my draft strategy video but I think if Kyle Hamilton's there at 11, we take him in a heartbeat. That's what I prefer to happen. And that's also what I think is realistic if he makes it that far. The problem is if he makes it to the 11th overall pick. I feel like all of this receiver stuff is just smoke screens. And maybe they're hoping that one of these other guys in the second round slides to him. Maybe like a Traylon Burks is there at 47. Maybe my boy George Pickens, even though they haven't shown any concrete interest in him. No visits, no pro day, no combine talks, nothing. 
So, I mean, maybe he's not on their big board. You have John Mechie from Alabama. Maybe he's there with the 47th pick. He's ranked as the 46th overall prospect, so that's quite possible. And, of course, linebacker is definitely an option in the second round. Chad Muma, Christian Harris. There's a lot of options there as far as linebacker goes later into the rounds. And if we don't take Kyle Hamilton in the first, maybe you take nick cross in the fourth and if you don't take receiver in the first or the second maybe you take alec pierce in the third or the fourth again we don't have a third round pick or a fifth round pick which really sucks in arguably the deepest draft in nfl history maybe not quality wise but quantity wise is definitely the deepest draft in nfl history due to the pandemic and guys staying an extra year and i mean you can also look at it as why this draft is so deep but not necessarily top heavy at any position like there's not necessarily elite guys at a lot of positions it's just a really deep draft at a lot of positions and it's probably because a lot of the elite guys went ahead and left last year to go into the draft they didn't stay that extra year whereas a lot of guys that are really good and why there's so much depth in this draft elected to stay another year in college and are coming out this draft so i think that is a good explanation as to why this draft is very deep but doesn't have a lot of stars at a lot of different positions because a lot of those stars went ahead and went into the draft last year even after not playing during the pandemic the year before and it just looks like tight end we're probably not going to touch that till fifth round or later and again we don't have a third round pick and we don't have a fifth round pick so that's where things are going to get ugly and i think that's the main reason we're likely to trade back in the first round to probably get some more third and or fifth round picks fourth rounders because again to my point the deepest draft in NFL history, maybe not quality wise, but quantity for sure. To not have a third and a fifth round pick really hurts. That's why a lot of teams out here doing all kinds of trades to just accumulate picks for this draft. I mean, you saw the Patriots traded away Shaq Mason for a fifth. I wouldn't have done that. I think Shaq Mason is worth way more than a fifth round pick. But the fact that the New England Patriots were even willing to do that shows how deep this draft is at a lot of positions, specifically interior offense alignment, where they may be able to use that fifth round pick to replace Shaq Mason. And so I definitely feel like we need to find a way to get some more draft picks. But yeah, man, y'all have access to this whenever you want it. The link is in the description. You can go through and look at everybody again, reference it when you want to do mock drafts. You know, this is a nice guide to be like, OK, so in the with our fourth round pick, we still haven't taken a safety we could take Nick Cross. We still haven't taken a linebacker. We could take Darian Bevers. We still haven't taken a receiver. You could take Alec Pierce in your mock draft. So definitely use this as a reference. I know I definitely will be with my mock draft that I'm coming out with tomorrow. And I'll also probably have this up on the side during the stream as we're, you know, doing the live stream and I'm talking about the draft and we're talking about who we may or may not get, who I want us to get, all that type of stuff. So during the live stream, I'll probably have this up and I'll probably have the link to this in the description of that live stream as well. So yeah, man use this however you want if you want to do it for mock drafts you want to just have it up next to you during the actual draft coming up thursday through saturday however you want to use it man it's free i just got it up there I, I do stuff like this for myself anyway even if i didn't have a youtube channel i would be putting all of this together so i can reference it myself while i'm looking at the draft and doing my own mock drafts probably on my phone and stuff like a lot of people do and then since i have the youtube channel and the platform i figured why not put this out there for y'all to see for free why not i'm gonna do it for myself anyway might as well give it to y'all so y'all can have it as well so yeah man definitely use this however you want to again you can go to this page as well to look at this these are my suggested biggest needs but we'll see how that goes of course these are the suggested biggest needs based on how many players we've looked into at each position and then when we actually get to the draft strategy video which again i'll probably do either tuesday or wednesday that's what we're going to break down what their biggest needs are for real again these are my biggest needs in my opinion and then these are just suggested from how many guys we've talked to per each position that doesn't necessarily mean these are actually our biggest needs so in the draft strategy video i'm actually talk about what they feel like our biggest needs are and what rounds we may attack them so definitely stay tuned for that and yeah man i'm excited to do this mock draft tomorrow based on this list again it's gonna be my attempt to be as accurate as possible so it's gonna get a little tricky it's way easier when i'm just talking about guys i want and just trying to see okay if we take safety in the first i guess i'll do receiver in the second and i can put y'all on to this really talented receiver that a lot of people aren't talking about but this one this mock draft coming out tomorrow is gonna be as realistic as possible so i gotta follow this guy because what else can we base it on it's gonna be hard to just pull a guy out of the hat out of nowhere 
that we haven't even shown even a little bit of interest in to that mock draft. So, I mean, and then Benjamin St. Juice, that's a good reference to a curveball. We didn't talk to him at all during the pre-draft process, and we took him in the third round. So who knows, man? I mean, even though they're not on this list, don't be discouraged. That doesn't mean that we're not interested in them because if we don't take receiver in the first round and George Pickens is there for some reason at 47, even though I really don't think he's going to make it past like the Chiefs, the Bills, that whole run of teams that if they add another receiver their offense is going to become even more potent don't see him making it past those guys but if he does and he's there at 47 again we don't take receiver in the first round i definitely can see us taking george pickens even though we haven't talked to him we haven't brought him in for a visit we haven't talked to him personally at the combine at the pro day anything so yeah use this list as a reference but nothing set in stone again benjamin st juice we didn't talk to him at all before we drafted him he didn't even know we were interested in him and then we just suddenly called his name in the third round so who knows what's gonna happen i'm pretty sure that mock draft i put out tomorrow is gonna end up looking terrible by saturday but we'll see man i gotta at least try but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video are you excited about the draft are you as excited as i am i doubt it because i love the draft it's like really my favorite part of football i'm not gonna lie but hey, let get in the comment section. Let me know how excited you are and who you think we will try to go get in the draft. Of course, when I do my mock draft video tomorrow, make sure y'all get in the comment sections for that and do y'all mock drafts so we can all reference it. We'll all go back to those comments in that video to see who was the most right. Because, I mean, at this point, with the way we took Benjamin St. Juice in the third, I'm not sure how right I'm going to be. I'm not sure how right anybody's going to be. But who knows, man? Maybe somebody will guess right, and then that video will be the reference to pull it up before the draft. I said that we were going to take such and such, and then we did. So we'll see, man. But yeah, man, I'm excited, man. Please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. And as always, I appreciate all of the support, man. Shouts out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Again, if you're not a channel member, go become one. Because I'm doing raw and edited film sessions leading all the way up to the draft. And then I'm also going to do a raw and unedited film session for every player we bring in through the draft and as undrafted free agents. Of course, I want to do some official film sessions where it's more organized, it's edited, and I release that to everybody. But the raw and edited ones are just too easy. And I feel like there's no excuse not to at least do one for each player that we bring in Thursday through Saturday. And even some of the following days as undrafted free agents. So we're going to take a look into all of that, man. If you're not a channel member, go become one to get all of that exclusive footage and yeah man i'll catch y'all later i'm out